This short video gives an overview of the external and internal structures of the honeybee's head. The most obvious structures are the compound eyes and the antennae. Other externally visible parts include the mandibles and the parts of the proboscis, the simple eyes or ocelli, and the attachments to the thorax around what is known as the occiput. The main parts within the head are the swallowing mechanism of the pharynx, the brain, three pairs of saliva glands, air sacs, the aorta, and the neurohumeral system, which produces juvenile hormone and ecdysone. These various components are all contained within a solid cuticle capsule, not unlike the skull of a vertebrate. We can see the cavities for the compound eyes and for the simple eyes or ocelli. The attachments of the antennae are close to the centre of the front of the head. If we look closely at the openings for the antennae, we see the small projection, the antennifer, on which the antenna is balanced and moved by the four muscles, each at right angles to each other. Below the antenna openings is a raised area known as the clypeus. This covers over the pharynx, the swallowing mechanism. This bulging shape provides space for the muscles which dilate the pharynx in order to create suction. To either side of the clypeus are the cheeks or gena. These contain the mandibular glands. The area above the antennae between the compound eyes is known as the fronds. If we look at the back of the head, we see the opening where the thorax is attached. The head is balanced on two projections from the thorax, from the two episternal plates. A number of muscles attach around this opening and enable the bee to turn the head to either side and up and down. Through this opening pass the main circulatory channel, the aorta, which terminates at the back of the brain, large tracheal trunks bringing air to the head organs, the esophagus passing down towards the intestinal system, the ducts of the saliva glands from the thorax, and the ventral nerve cord, part of the chain of central nervous system ganglia which run along the ventral side of the bee's body. Lowermost at the back of the head is the fossa. This cavity is where the proboscis folds up when not in use. Within the head the main structures are the brain, the swallowing mechanism of the pharynx, the three pairs of saliva glands, the largest being the brood food gland or hypopharyngeal gland in front of the brain, the post cerebral salivary gland behind the brain, and the mandibular glands within the cheeks. A large part of the lower part of the head is made up of the muscles which control the mouth parts and those which move the antennae. The structures within the head are also supplied with branches of the tracheae bringing air to the tissues and there are air sacs around the brain. The aorta terminates just behind the brain allowing hemolymph to circulate freely within the head and then back through the connection to the thorax and backwards towards the abdomen. Behind the head are two specialised glands which produce hormones important in the development of the bees, juvenile hormone and ecdysone. The main internal structural components of the head are the anterior tentorial arms these two bridges of cuticle run upwards and backwards from a position below the antennal openings at the front to just below the occipital foramen at the back. These structures provide attachment for many of the muscles controlling the antennae and the mouth parts and also help to maintain the structure of the head. That ends this particular video. Many of these structures are explained in more detail in other videos. The head of the bee, much as the head of vertebrates, is a complex structure with many organ systems 
and it can take a while to get to understand how the different components relate to each other.